shake off this fear as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance loud in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Now all of my feet, I will turn. Shake off this fear as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance loud in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Now all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off this fear as I sing.
Jireh, my provider. Jesus. We lift your name on high. We sing the name Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for giving us your best in your Son, Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name, the name that is above every situation and every circumstance. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus. Our unbroken faith is in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather tonight as a church, one spirit, one heart in many locations. Father, our hearts are surrendered to you. And Lord, as a church, we lift up our military. We lift up our armed forces, first responders. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed so that they walk in healing. They walk in wholeness. They walk in peace. Father, we thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We lift up their families to you. And we thank you, Father, for peace, peace upon their hearts. Father, as they wait in expectation for their safe return home. Lord, we thank you for the United States of America. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy as citizens of this great nation. We apply the blood of Jesus over our nation and we declare that we are a nation that is uh, gathered together in one, one in righteousness, unity and justice, righteousness. Father, that is the nation that we live in. And Lord, we thank you that your blood continues to be poured out upon our nation, upon the governments, people in authority, Lord, that they would come to know you as their living Savior. Father, we thank you that, again, once again, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in this place. We have a great expectation for the word that will transform us tonight. And everyone who agrees with that prayer says, amen and amen. Well, family, we're so blessed that you're right there in your living room. You're tuning in from work. Maybe you're driving home in your car and you are in the right place. You're tuned in at the right place at the right time. It's truly an honor and a privilege to be here gathered together where there's no time or distance in the realm of the spirit. So we're united together as one. And, and we just appreciate you being here on behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Arden and Pastor Kuna. We love like to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. If this is your very first time tuning in, welcome, 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 welcome. If you don't yet have a home church, we'd like to invite you to make Word of Life your home church. And we would love it if you could just enter in the chat box right now maybe your name and where you're tuning in from and we'd have leaders that would love to reach out to you. You can also contact us at our website and again right there in the chat box. So family just kind of give a give give that, you know, that knuckle. It's not a it's not a punch. It's a knuckles. Go ahead and do that knuckles emoji there in the chat box on Facebook, on YouTube. Once again, thank you for joining us. Well, we have this Saturday, that's right, this Saturday for the young and the younger, right? So the young and the younger, whatever category you fall in, we have our Generation One service going on. We're so excited about what God is doing to raise up a generation that is uh, uh, standing on the uncompromised Word of God, that is willing to say, yes, I love Jesus, and to tell the generations, the, those around them, that they too can have a changed story. Well, they're gonna, we're going to be meeting as generations. Generation one, that's right, the young and the younger. We're going to be meeting this Saturday. 4.30 doors will open, 5 o'clock services will start. Again, you know, come in to the house. We're going to be here in person. So we're going to be here in person. So come and join us and be a part of what God's doing in, in uh, encouraging the next generation, lifting up the next generation. Well, we also have next week, we have prayer week going on. And that too will be here in person in our sanctuary. It's going to be 6 p.m. to 7.30 Monday 
Monday through Friday. We'll end a little early on Wednesday for service, but 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then Saturday morning at 7 a.m. So come, come be a part of what we're doing as you know in praying for our upcoming conference, in praying for um, uh, lives. Your families are covered in prayer. Those that you're believing to come into the kingdom of God, we're going to be lifting them up ex with an expectation that God is going to do a miracle in our conference, in their lives, and we're expanding the kingdom of God through the power of prayer. And speaking of prayer, we are in the midst of 40 days. That's right. We started on Monday, and we're going to go all the way through our G12 conference that's coming up in, on September 3rd. And we are praying around the clock. We have 24-hour prayer going on. How awesome is that? And so if you'd like to be a part of this 24-hour of 40 days of prayer, we're doing it through our life groups. Go ahead and reach out to your life group leader. If you don't yet have a life group, go ahead and and comment in the chat box and we'll hook you up with a life group because your voice matters. That's right. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman, that's you, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. So let's be a part of prayer. And we're praying for our G12 conference coming up September 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Can you tell? We're just excited about what God is doing. This is our year of 2021. We're going to be gathering together. Now our in-person tickets right now are sold out. But that doesn't mean that you can't gather. So we are launching something new. It's called Watch Parties. You know, I don't know if you've been uh, watching the Olympics at all, but they've been having watch parties all over different states, different countries. We're going to be having watch parties right here in the state of Hawaii where you can open your home. Maybe you want to open your garage. Maybe you want to put up a tent, you know, in the park and, and take out a generator and put on a big screen. I mean, we just take the limits off of God. Maybe you want to rent a pavilion. I mean, or, or invite yourself up to your neighbor's house and say, come on, let's watch this. I'm going to host you at your house. I mean, whatever God puts in your heart, let's do this. We have a, we, a, you can be a host of a watch party. We have information for you online. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to your life group leader. Please reach out on the chat box and we'd love to put some information into your hands. Well, we'd like to show you a little video as for our upcoming G12 conference. Go ahead and watch this. The gospel is about changing humanity's story. It's about transforming them by the power of God as we yield to the Holy Ghost. God can change the story of a person, of a family, of a generation, of a nation by changing the story of one person at a time. This is that time. Somebody is waiting for you. Somebody is waiting for me. Somebody is waiting for us. Somebody is waiting for you on the other side of your obedience. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you're waiting for. All right, so much going on here at Word of Life. We're excited. So again, you know, we're going to look forward to seeing you on Saturday for Gen 1. It's going to be in person, but it will also be online through our regular streams and how we stream our Sunday service. So come and be a part of this Saturday. Well, right now we're going to be a part of giving because it's time to receive our tithes and our offerings. And we are a church that loves to give. Right, turn to whoever's sitting on the couch next to you, say, we love to give. That's right. If, if, if not, go to the bathroom, look in the mirror and say, we love to give. That's right. We love to give. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses uh, 10 and 11 in the Passion Translation, I'm going to read it for you. It says, this generous God, wow, our God is generous. This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant toward you. First, he supplies every need, plus more. Oh, our conference is called more. Come on, somebody. Then he multiplies the seed 
as you sow it so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. You will be abundantly enriched in every way as you give generously on every occasion. For when we take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. I love, love, love these, these scriptures because it talks about our generous God. And you know, we as believers, as disciples of Christ, are being formed in the character of Christ. So as God is generous, so are we. Amen. As God, say, as God is generous, so am I. That's right. We are generous. And it says here that he gives the abundant seed to those who sow it. See, it, when we are choosing to trust God, when we release that seed, he gives it to us in abundance because he is generous and so are we. And it says here, um, so that the harvest of your generosity will grow and we will be abundantly enriched. And as we give generously on every occasion. So it's not just giving generously when we feel like we can. It's not just giving generously when, when someone is, you know, when it's an emotional decision. No, or generous if we think that that situation is worthy of us giving to. No, no, no. We give in accordance to the word. And the word says that we are to bring that first 10% of our increase into the house. That's our tithe. And then above that to give a, an offering. Anything above that tithe is an offering. And that's the generosity of our hearts. Because we know that as God is generous, so are we. Because we trust in his word. And so I want to invite you tonight. And you know, there's a link there. There, um, in the, if you're on our website. There's a, a link on our website if you're watching via YouTube or Facebook, Hulu, Apple TV, any one of those platforms. Right now there's a screen going up where you can uh, text and, and be able to give. I love to give online. It's convenient and it's easy. And I want to encourage you. You have a generous heart because you have God's heart. And when we trust God with our seed, when we release it, then we can expect an abundant harvest and even more seed to then sow. Amen. So are we ready to give tonight? Amen. I can see you smiling. I, that's right. I can see you smiling right there. Go ahead and put that hand lifting up emoji in the chat box there to signify. That's right. I'm a generous giver. I'm an obedient tither. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to trust you at your word. With unbroken faith, we come as tithers and generous givers, Lord, knowing that as you are generous, so are we. We put the seed into good ground. Ground, and therefore we can expect an abundant harvest, Father, because you watch over your word to perform it in our life. You are faithful. You are good. Father, we thank you, Lord, that as we release our seed, you give abundant seed. You give even more seed so that we can be a blessing to others. Father, God, thank you, Lord, that you're bringing, as we release the seed, you're bringing increase so that we can have, buy more tickets for our G12 conference so that we can host even bigger watch parties. Lord, we take the limits off of you and what you you are doing in and through our lives as we give up these tithes and we give up these offerings. So bless this, Father, and in all of it, you get the victory and the honor. And everyone who agrees with that prayer says, amen and amen. amen. Come on, the heart of our Father is that he would take care of us. We can trust him to hold every piece of our life together. So let's worship him because he's good, he's faithful, now and forever. Amen. You come at the right time when I least expect it, never behind. So would I be surprised when you deliver every time on mountain tops? You stay the same in valleys alone. You never change, and I believe that I will see. The good.
you work on yourself there are some times when things aren't going to go right there are times when anything that can happen will happen life happens the unexpected the uncalled for it may be your business it may be your heart that is broken today it may be the number in your bank account that is screaming you are broke it is not what you go through that determines where you end up. It's who you listen to. Because I think right now, you are walking through a valley between two voices. One is wisdom, one is worry. One is gratitude, one is grumbling. One is blame, one is faith. But there's also opportunity to get stronger and get more resilient and get better the fight isn't over the fight is just beginning i need you to look at that sickness that's going on in your life right now whatever it is i want you to say i can beat it i can beat it i will beat it i must i got a family to live for i ain't through yet my life ain't over yet and i'm not retreating i'm not running i don't care what they say on paper I don't care if you say we outnumber. We don't retreat. We don't run. We gonna stand, we gonna live, we gonna die by what we stand for, and everybody gonna know what we represent and what we're a part of. I got staying power. I got staying power. Be encouraged today that no matter what you walk through, there is within you a spirit that is greater than whatever is going on around you. If you would be willing to fight your way through this battle, fight your way through it, I'm telling you at the end of the fight, is going to come victory. And as you crawl up and out of that dismal and wretched place, as you rise above what you were, and as you take the form of who you are supposed to be, you will see that in the very act of standing up, in the very act of fighting on, you will become and you will remain unbroken. All right, all right, all right. Come on, somebody, put your hands together virtually if you have to, but I want to welcome all of you to a Wednesday night service and I believe the Spirit of God is going to minister to you tonight. Listen, before I get started, I want to make sure that those of you who we've invited to be uh, with us with Gen 1, it's not only in person, but also online. You can tap in both ways. Uh, we want to make sure that you get a hold of it. We want you to be part, uh, a participator. 
If there's no way that you can get here in person, we will have it online so you can you can uh, enjoy it as it's happening and the anointing of God will be just as strong. So I know that's what Coley, Pastor Coley and Branson would w want you to understand. You know, it, but if you can be here, there's something about being in the presence. It's something about being here in person that makes it outstanding. So this is a prep before we head for our G12 conference in just a few weeks after that. So I really want to thank Gen 1 for being involved and all of those of you who are coming to Gen 1 participating. It really gives you uh, motivation to go forth in a, in a great conference. It's going to be happening just a few weeks after that on the heels of uh, the Gen 1 uh, get together. Before I go on any further, before, before I get into my message today, I want to make sure that all of you listening to me right now understand that Word of Life Christian Center across every church is in what I call 40 days of preparation. 40 days of preparation. Right now we're in, uh, we still have 37 more days. We started on Sunday and uh, and right now we are praying 24 hours a day. That's right, 24 hours a day. Every hour we are saturating and we are going before the throne of grace so that we can be prepared for you that are going to participate at the uh, G12 conference. Not only because the speakers are magnanimous, they're coming from international uh, places, some you have never heard before. We're going to have people from Russia, people from South Korea speak. We're going to have people from Singapore speak. We're going to have people from Europe, from France speak. It's just going to be very, very powerful. And of course, our pastor, Pastor Cesar Castellanos. But we want you to participate. You can participate if you get involved with one of our life groups. They have prayer times. Or if you can't uh, make it, you need to lock in with one hour of prayer you know, at one one hour a day, just participate, join your faith because we're preparing for marriages and families and individuals and miracles to happen in people's lives. You don't get that atmosphere of the miraculous if you don't try to tap into God's way of doing uh, ministry. We're not just going to show up and expect somebody who is going to minister a word to us to carry it all. We have to create that atmosphere and we already have it. We're a people of faith. But I want you to understand that whenever God wanted to prepare someone for his purposes or prepare them for a new level, you know, he would set, you know, 40 days for them to, um, the Bible points out, to, to set in motion in their life. For example, there was Noah. Noah's life was transformed with 40 days of rain and Moses was transformed by 40 days at Mount Sinai. And the, the spies were transformed by 40 days in the promised land. David was transformed by Goliath's 40-day challenge. Elijah was transformed, the great prophet, when uh, God gave him 40 days of strength with one meal. Um, the entire city of Nineveh was transformed, you know, because when God gave the people 40 days to change and to repent, and they did, um, Jesus was empowered by 40 days in the wilderness and the disciples were also transformed by 40 days with Jesus after his resurrection. So you can see that 40 days is a marker of transformation. You need to know that, church. You need to know that we are creating an atmosphere that's very deliberate and disturbs the devil. It absolutely terrifies the adversary that a people would take God so serious that would actually begin to, to pray every day, 24 hours. We're coming against principalities and powers. We're pulling down strongholds and we're going for the breakthrough. Amen. And it's going to start at this Gen 1, you know, gathering. So don't miss out. I'm here to tell you that's got some rhythm going on there. So you're going to want to show up big time because God's going to show up big time. So I'm excited. Excited. You know that there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about tonight. I'm just trying to tap into the Holy Ghost right here. There's so much in my heart right now because I'm just, uh, you know, when you start praying, you know, 40 days, God just starts depositing things on the inside of you. 
But it wasn't too long ago that I was talking to you on a Wednesday night about how to frame your world, how to build a, a great life. And when I talk about building a great life, I'm talking about building a great faith life. Most people try to build something without faith, and when you're without faith, you're really without God. And I want to make sure that you understand, Mr. and Mrs. Christian, that you're not called just to live naturally. You're called to live supernaturally. It's very important that you have a miracle mindset, and many Christians don't. Even though they're Christians, they don't have a miracle mindset. They have a problem-centered mindset, but they have to renew their minds as we all have to renew our minds so that we can get a hold of that miracle mindset because God is a God of miracles. Amen? But I want you to, uh, that, that opener that we just shared with you called unbroken faith speaks to me all the time because it's a word that God has been ministering to us on a Sunday morning and I want to kind of in context with what I want to share with you tonight how to frame your world how to build a great life of faith and I'll show you how to do that practically and it's very very powerful and it's important that you know how to do this but it was Paul the Apostle who said to his disciple Titus, he said, dedicate yourselves to living an unbroken faith. Now, when something is broken, it means it doesn't work. I know, that takes a, a rocket science to figure that out, huh? But it means something is not functioning or it's not operating correctly or you're not getting the most out of it. For sure, you know, there are many people, I grew up, you know, being a brokenic, meaning I would try to fix things, but I end up breaking them and making them worse, not helping them and getting them along. Anyways, that being said, you know, when something is broken, it needs fixing, it needs repair, it needs adjustment, it needs some kind of attention. It was Dr. Cho who built the greatest church to, to date, you know, well over 1.5 million people, um, who said many, many people, referring to Christians, think they understand faith when they do not. But it's through faith that we are working together with God because God is a God of faith. That's what Dr. Cho says, unquote. So I, I'm going to share with you tonight how to begin to build a great life. And I'm referring to a great life of faith. And because without faith, you have no touch of God You'll end up with religion, you'll end up with rituals, you'll end up doing all kinds of good things, but never moving mountains, never seeing the supernatural, and that is not how you and I have been called to live. We've been called to live by the power of God, amen? Now remember, one of the foundation verses that I gave you was from Psalms 27, verse 1, where it says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. It's important that you and I know how to build a house. Now, when we start talking about building a great life, you know, all of a sudden everybody starts thinking about what they want, where they want to be, what they want to accomplish. You can't do it without substance. You can't do, you can't build something without something to build with. And you need to understand there's two major elements, you know. Of course, being that we understand that as believers, Jesus Christ is the center of it all. We've been given the Holy Spirit. But there's two things that we need to do very clearly. Number one, we need to renew our mind to the Word of God because we need God's Word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It does not come by praise and worship. It does not come by doing good deeds. It's, it's good to do those things, but they should, that, that is an expression of our faith. But faith does not come in doing works. Faith does not come in being a great volunteer. And we love our volunteers and we are really appreciative of everyone that gets involved. But that is not how faith comes. Faith comes by the word and uh, hearing that word. We have, that's why your devotional life is absolutely critically important. But also there are people that sometimes we get familiar with church anity. We get, church, we get familiar with church dialogue, church words. And we get churchy, 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 but we don't, we don't walk in the supernatural because those words are nothing but mental assent. In other words, we agree with them, we like them, we just don't apply them to our own personal lives. And so 
For example, one of them could be faith. I, you know, for the most part, most Christians, after a season being in church, they hear about faith, the importance of faith, the value of faith, how God is a God of faith. True. But it doesn't mean that they're applying any of it. And if you don't apply, see, faith without works is absolutely dead. That's what the book of James says. So faith takes corresponding actions. Faith, you just can't say, well, I, I like faith, I have faith. Well, great. A lot of people have a lot of things that they never use. You know, a lot of people have things in their homes that are broken. They still own it, but they're broken. And this is why Paul said to Titus, you know, make sure that you dedicate yourself to living with unbroken faith. Just because you have the idea of faith or you've heard a message of faith or you had a faith exercise or maybe even a faith accident sometime in the past. Sometimes people stumble into the goodness of God. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do it deliberately. They couldn't repeat it if they tried. Why? Because they don't know what they did. They don't know whether it was them praying, someone else praying, you know, and so they, they have no confidence. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to build up our foundation so that we have confidence. I'm talking about living and having a strong marriage, living a strong life, fulfilling your purpose, your destiny, doing whatever God has called us to do according to his word and doing it right and doing it as best possible and with the spirit of excellence. Amen. So um, I want us to understand the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 7, most blessed is the man who believes in, trusts and relies on the Lord. It says, whose hope and confidence the Lord is. Verse 8 goes on to say, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river. Now, that sounds refreshing to me, doesn't it? It goes on to say, and it shall not see fear when the heat comes. That means when adversity comes. <laughs> see, just because it's happening in the world doesn't have to happen to you. Just because there's problems and sickness and disease doesn't mean it has to show up in your living room. But I want you to understand it says right here, it says, um, and it shall not see, sorry, and it shall not see and fear when the heat comes, but its leaf shall be green and it shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought, nor shall it cease from yielding fruit. Now, you know, our conference is all about being more fruitful. Your marriage can be more. Your life can be more. Your finances can be more. The results you expect from God can be more. God is more than enough. And I want you to understand, so it's talk, we're talking about being fruitful here. You cannot do this without faith. You cannot do it having arguments against God. It, it can only happen if we're going to surrender to God's word because God's word is going to challenge your flesh. It's going to challenge your mindset. It's going to challenge your feelings because you cannot please God in the flesh. The Bible says it's impossible to please God if you're going to operate in the flesh. Did you know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 14, verse 23, that if it's not a faith, it is sin. And there's so many people that are operating out of their own mind, out of their own opinion, because they're Christians, they think they're right. They got quiet in this holy place. Oh, that's right, because there's nobody here. It's a, it's a virtual service. I forgot. And uh, I just want you to understand. Amen. But this verse in Jeremiah 17 is so powerful because although it's in the Old Testament, we have a new covenant based upon better promises for you and I that exist right now. You know, our God is the God of the right now. He's not a God of the yesterday. He's not a God of, he's not the, the God of he was or he's going to be. He's the God of the right now. And see, what faith doesn't just say, you know, a lot of people, oh, I believe something's going to happen. I believe something good's going to happen. Uh, you know what? That's not faith. That's just a wish in motion. And I want you to understand, faith is always in the now. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. God is always right now. God is always working in your right now. If you're not believing right now, you're just not believing. If you don't have faith right now for your body to be healed, you're really not in faith. Well, one day God's going to heal me. That's not faith. That's religion. And I know that's going to disturb a, little, a few of you people. But anyways, it's okay. Get disturbed and get healed. Let's get over it and let's get on to the word. Because we got to get on. See, this is what I mean by broken faith. Broken faith 
sounds and looks like and participates in some of the phraseology, but it's really not functioning. It's really not in the arena of the God factor. And you have to understand, listen, the Bible says God calls those things that be not as though they are right now. I mean, you don't have to wait to see something for it to be real, but it's got to be real on the inside of you through the word of God for it to ever manifest in your life. Was that, did I go too fast on? Probably went too fast. Anyways, I'm, I'm trying to help you along here. I just got so much to say. It's all packed up. I'm trying to unpack it, but slowly here. But I just want you to understand, I want to share with you a passage that is uh, just transforming. Because in Jeremiah, we see that we don't have to lose our hope because this is going on in the world. And this is what happened with the pandemic. We had Christians just jumping out of the boat, you know, and just speaking and talking. And, you know, it really exposed what they were rooted in or what they were not rooted in, the word of God. You know, I'm not saying they're not going to heaven, but I'm just simply saying there's a lot of Christians that are not being successful on this earth with their daily lives because although they go to church, you know, they're not living by the word. And sometimes, although they're involved in doing things from praise and worship to music to, you know, you know, good stuff that really is helpful for a lot of people, being a lot of blessing, you know, they substitute that good works for some kind of reward system. God, why don't you just bless me because of all that I'm doing for you? Well, now you're into works. You're not into, you can't get into works now. See, that's not how God operates. That's maybe how you want him to operate. It might be how someone told you God operates. God blesses his people for doing uh, various things, but it's not how it builds your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not in the word, you're not growing in your faith. And it's not just reading the Bible, it's embracing it, it's receiving the word. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that we just like, whoo, I'm glad that's for somebody else. No, that's for you, <laughs> for me, it's for all of us. Yeah, turn to your virtual neighbor and say, mm -hmm, he's talking to you right now. But I want you to understand that God is so good. Now, God's word must be our foundation, as I've been talking. If you're gonna frame a great faith life. And I don't care how young you are. I don't care how senior you are. I don't care how long you've been in church. Don't use those titles with God because they just don't work. Faith is faith. You don't get a special pass of seniority, you know. You don't get a senior discount because you think you've been in church long enough. <laughs> you know, that's some people put it. You know, they want the blue light special because they've been around long enough. Well, that's all they've been is around. But anyways, I want you to understand that the Bible says... You know, the righteous, the righteous have to have a foundation. In Psalms 11, verse 3, it says, If the foundations are destroyed, it says, What can the righteous do? So, last time I was with you, I shared a passage that Jesus imparted to us from the Message Bible. And it begins in verse 24 of Matthew chapter 7. So, I hope you have your Bibles. Hold on here. We're going to have to, we only got three hours and and some odd to go, but um, I know I wish I had that much time. But I want you to hear verse 24. And Jesus, now if Jesus is speaking to us, that means he heard these words from his father. May I repeat myself again because you need to understand. Jesus said, I never say those things that my father hasn't told me to say. And I never do those things that my father hasn't told me to do. So here he is speaking. This is the message translation. And it reads like this. These words referring to the words that he's speaking. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. You build, let me stop there for a moment. You build, you must understand, if I'm going to build a great life, it must be on a standard that is fail-proof, a standard that will not falter. He's going to show you how to do this now. This is literally the Jesus plan for your life. Literally, this is how you build a marriage, how you build anything. Anything, any relationship, a career, how you build your personal life, this is how you build you. 
This is how you do it. This is how you get involved. This is how you understand. Because if you're going to go off on your, well, we're going to get to there uh, in just a moment. So I better not jump. But it says here, these words are foundational words, words to build a life on. Did you know people go to church year after year after year and they never apply the Bible? They don't apply the Bible. They love to hear the word. They love to get inspired. They love to get motivated. They love to feel something. Woo! I just, woo! I felt that. Mm, felt the Holy Ghost. That's right. You probably did. That was, that was probably real too. But the point is, that is not faith in itself. We use all these little gimmicks and all these little, I shouldn't call them gimmicks. They're, they're real, but we, we try to substitute them as it being some kind of strength we have. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. But here Jesus is saying, if you work these words into your life. Now, how many of you know that God calls us to walk in love? But you know what? You're going to have to work that word into your life. God calls us to walk in forgiveness towards others. You're going to have to work that word in your life. It's easy when there's nobody to forgive. It's a different story when someone's acting unforgivable. <laughs> In your mind, it's like they don't deserve forgiveness. They probably don't, but neither did you. See, that, that's the key, the whole thing. We always come out with a standard that's based on my emotions versus it being based on the word of God. And this is where we go, you know, we go off the rails, so to speak. You have to work this word into your life. You have to work it. You have to make a, well, what did Paul say? Dedicate yourself. To living by unbroken faith. That's what he said to Titus. Dedicate yourself. Dedication is not a feeling. To act on the word of God doesn't mean that you're always going to feel like, you know, demonstrating the love of God towards somebody who's being unlovable. Forgiving somebody because, you know, um, you feel they don't deserve it because of maybe what they've done. But you don't do it because of how you feel. You do it because of what he said. This is called working that word into your life. This is what Jesus is saying. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on a solid rock. The rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. Now, this is what you need to understand. Don't jump too fast here. You need to understand that this is what Jesus is trying to get you to understand, you can live unmovable. It's not that the storms won't come, the rain won't pour, you know, these kind of elements. You and I are not exempt from those things, but you don't have to be knocked out. You don't have to become a statistic. You don't have to become, you know, the collateral damage of some kind of storm, whether it's a relational storm or a literal storm or some financial storms. And they happen all the time in our country and in this world, all the time. But going back to Jeremiah 17, going back to this word, we understand that, wait a minute, we can get to a place a real place, a place where we are strong, we are confident, we are secure. You're going to hear the winds of this world and its storms all the time. You're never going to stop hearing it. They're going to try to knock on your door and say, I want in. You're going to say, no, you don't. Why? Because you're confident. Your, your relationships will be challenged. Why? Not because you're weak, but because the adversary will try to attack. And you cannot fall apart like a $2 watch, you know, bought there on the swap meet. You're going to have to be stronger than your emotions. Your emotions are sometimes going to be challenged and, you know, you're not going to feel as comfortable. And, you know, you do have temporary emotional feelings like anxiety and temporary thoughts. But those are temporary thoughts. Not every thought you have is a, that's something that's, in, you know, rooted in you. That's why we have to cast down those vain imaginations and take authority over that. And we'll get to that in a later point. But what I'm, I'm sharing with you that Jesus is telling you to work these words into your life. Don't be entertained. He said here, don't be entertained by this word. Watch. I'll, I'll, let's read verse 26 and 27 of Matthew chapter 7 from the Message Bible so we can understand what happens if we don't work them into our life. It says, but if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you are like a stupid carpenter 
Sorry, Pastor Kuna. You are like a stupid carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach and a storm rolled in and the waves came up and it collapsed like a house of cards. Your life or you as an individual do not have to collapse to the pressures of this world. You do not have to fold. That is called broken faith. That is called faith that does not know how to operate in the word to resist the adversary and all of his storms and his tricks and his tactics. And it's important that you and I understand that I don't have to be a statistic. You don't have to be a statistic. You know, um, I don't get a free pass because I'm a senior pastor, you know. Jesus is giving us the ultimate example. This is saying basically, this is the blueprint on how to build a great life of faith. Build it on my word. When you work it in, that means you're working it in by faith, not by your feelings, not because it's um, just a sunny day or everything is going well. Right now, God is speaking to some of you and uh, you're how you have turmoil in your life. You might have turmoil in your body. You might have turmoil in your mind. You might have turmoil in your marriage. You might have turmoil in your, you know, your finances. And God is trying to give you an answer of what you need to do. And uh, what you want is a quick fix. And God is good. God is great. God can step in there really fast. But he's going to always operate according to his word. He needs a people who will operate by faith. He needs a people who say, well, if that's what God's word says, well, I'm going to change the way I've been doing life. You know, I've been entertained by the word. I've been inspired by the word. But you know what? I've not been applying any of it to my life. Uh, you know, uh, so we've got to make sure that, that we do so. Now, here, here's what I want you to understand. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, referring to faith, by it, by faith, the elders, the patriarchs from Abraham to Moses to, you know, you name the prophets, all of those that you know, David, others, goes on and on. The, the, the patriarchs, the elders, that's what it's referring to, obtained a good testimony, all right? Or a good report in the King James Version says. Verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made by things which are visible. Now right here he's giving you the next step. It's impossible. Impossible. To please God. It says in verse 6. To please God without faith. But he that believes that God is as you and I do as Christians must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So diligently seeking God is getting into his word, having a prayer life, having a devotional life, staying in fellowship, you know, with the, with the family of God. It says here, but faith, now faith is the substance of things hopeful. Now, you know, hope is, okay, hope is not a time frame. Hope is a picture. It's important that you understand that when the Bible says, do not be moved away from the hope of the gospel, you and I, we have hope when we understand what the God of the right now said about right now. That he's your healer right now. He's your deliverer right now. He's your savior right now. He's your <clears throat> restorer right now. He's your everything good right now. But most people think that hope is in the future. Well, I hope God's going to do this one of these days. I hope he's going to come and fix my marriage. I hope he's going to come and heal my body. That is not faith. You're living in hope. You're living in some future time that's never going to come. Because faith demands an answer right now. See, faith is the substance of the things you hope for. It is the substance of the picture that the gospel gives you, like healing. If you don't have faith for your healing right now, then you're not going to get your healing not only now, but later on, because faith demands, faith calls those things that be not as though they are. 
well, you know, I've always been a person that's been anxious and, you know, and had not really had peace. And, and I've just been one of those worry wars, Pastor Art. Ha, 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 you know, it's just the way I am. Well, that's not the way you have to be, but apparently that's the way you choose to be. See, because a lot of people just choose to be what they're used to and comfortable at being because they don't want to make the changes. Eventually, you're going to have to believe that when Jesus said, cast your care over on me, he wasn't kidding with you. The problem is a lot of people think, like, ah, that's cute, cast my care over me. That's, that's, that's really cute, but you don't understand my world. Well, you obviously don't understand God's world. See, because you and I are not to bring God down to our level of understanding. Rather, we are to be elevated to his level through the word. And his promises is what elevates us. His word is what elevates us by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will make everything real to you. And um, it's not that you and I don't have opinions. We're full of opinions. We're full of thoughts. That's the dangerous part. We actually think we're smarter than we actually are. And uh, because we have opinions and sometimes the, the logic goes, well, I have an opinion about something. And because I'm connected to God, that opinion must be a God opinion. Incorrect. Because if your opinion is out of line with God's word, then you're still out of line. You know, I once heard a minister of the gospel. And in fact, it was Brother Copeland who once said, made this statement. He was talking to somebody. And I want you to hear this because somebody needs to hear this. It's a good thing to begin to develop. And he was talking about, and he was hearing a problem. He says, you better get on the God side of that. Get on the God side of that. Get on the God side of that. In other words, sometimes you and I can hear a person and they get, they're talking anxious and they're talking worry. All you have to do is say, get on the God side. In other words, get yourself in alignment with what God has to say about that issue. For example, if I'm hearing a person talk anxious and worry, I would say to them, get on the God side of that without having to go through all chapters and verses, Right. You know, they might wonder, okay, what do you mean by that? I can explain it, but the point is this. That's not the way God thinks. The God side of that is you cast all your care over the Lord. The God side of that is be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplicate, get on the God side of that situation. When a person starts gossiping and, and you know, and the, the, the yapper is going crazy, you know, they're just talking stuff, I would say get on the God side of that. Now, whether they understand me or not, I tell myself, I got to get on the God side of things. At times, you know, I got to get on the God side of that, you know, because there is a God side to a situation and then there's a your side to the situation. There's a God side, which is always based on his word, faith in the word. And, um, and then there's how I think about it. For example, it says in Proverbs chapter three, it says, trust the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all of your heart, relying on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. That's why I say get on the God's side of a situation. Well, what does God say about it? Well, I don't know. Well, then until you know, you don't know. Until you know what God says about it, you should be making a decision. Well, well I have to. No, you, you don't. that's where you get hasty in life. That's where you get in the wrong relationships, make the wrong agreements, get into the wrong situations because you were hasty versus being faith guided, you know, through God's word. In verse, in verse 7 it says, don't think for a moment that you know it all. For, the wis for wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that is wrong. Now, nobody wants, nobody listening to me right now, myself included, wants to do anything that's wrong. But you know, sometimes in the heat of the battle, and whether it's a relational battle or it's, uh, something that's going on on the job, you could, you could be pushed to make pressure decisions. You can be pushed in, um, in a volatile conversation to make reactionary decisions that you're going to regret. You know, and so you, you know, you gotta get on the God's side of that situation. Now with the remaining time that I have, which you haven't given me a lot of time, but the remaining time that I do have, I, I wanna make sure that you understand that God wants you and I to frame our world 
by the word of God. You need to frame everything in your world by the word of God. This is how God built things. This is how God created things. In verse Hebrews 11, again, I go back. It says, by faith we understand. There, there's two elements it says here. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made by things which are visible. Faith is not visible, but it is tangible. Let me help you understand this. By faith, we understand. Without a faith mindset, again, a, a word of God mindset, you won't understand how God operates. And this is where people get frustrated. Because God is a God of miracles. God raises the dead to life. God does the impossible. Logic cannot understand that. The intellect cannot comprehend that. Reason, it just doesn't make sense. Because faith doesn't make sense. And our senses do not make faith. It's important that you understand it says here, by faith we understand. You have to approach God by faith, not by feelings, not by your senses, not by logic. Logic will never catch up to God. Logic will never understand, comprehend, or necessarily agree with how God does things because it's not logical when you're facing an impossible situation and then God says, nothing is impossible with him that believes. Of course, that's believing in God. It doesn't make sense. No. But when you believe in God, you're operating in faith. So you're no longer in the realm of logic. You're in the realm of faith. Dr. Cho calls it the realm of visions and dreams. The Bible refers to it as the realm of the Holy Spirit. You see... Before I close here, you need to understand that God is not a natural God, though he works and intervenes in a natural world. He is a God of miracles. And he needs to hear your voice, not just any voice, a specific voice. There's a language in the kingdom of God that he requires of you and I. Galatians 3, 5 says, God who supplies the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the move of the Spirit of God in our lives, that's what it refers to. He who supplies the Spirit, God who supplies the Holy Spirit and works miracles amongst us in our natural space and time world, in our limited world as we understand it logically, as we understand it intellectually. God is not limited to this world of time and space. He is a God of faith. He is a God of the miraculous. He is past, present, and future. There's never a place that he's not involved in because he is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is all-powerful. Now listen to this. Paul says, and gives us a glimpse of the God who now lives inside of you, if you're born again. The glimpse is that he's the God of miracles. So it says, God who supplies your marriage, your career, your body, whatever promise, all the promises of God are yes and amen, whatever you need, He's El Shaddai for every one of those things. He's the God who is more than enough. Without the God factor, you have no miracle factors. Let me finish that verse. I'm trying to get to it. God who supplies the power of the Holy Spirit, the resurrection power. Listen. 
God who supplies the Spirit. Now, when he says the Spirit, this is not a little, we're not thinking of, please get the Tinkerbell Disneyland mentality out of your head. This is the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. This is the same Spirit that got Lazarus out of the grave. This is the same spirit that worked in every miracle you've ever seen recorded in the Bible. I know it boggles your mind to think that way, but he now lives inside of you. But the only way we're going to see the power in that way released in our lives is by faith in the word of God. He's ready to work. He's been given to us. Dear Lord. But here's, listen, and I'll prove this to you in this verse. Now, he who supplies the Spirit, Galatians 3, 5 again. And he who supplies the Spirit, the miracle working, you know, miracles of God. And does miracles amongst us. Does he do it by the works of the law? In other words, by our efforts, by our duties, by our rituals, by our good practices, by our volunteerism and all the good stuff, good stuff. Please don't misunderstand, great stuff. We need to be involved with humanity. We need to be kind to people. We need to go and help people and give them a helping hand. Of course we need to be involved in any way that we possibly can helping humanity. But that in itself is not faith. He goes on, or does he do it by the hearing of faith? So, the verse says that God needs to hear our faith for the Holy Spirit to begin to move. I'll go back over one more time. Galatians 3, 5. He who supplies the Spirit and works miracles amongst us, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The answer is the hearing of faith. He needs to hear our faith. He needs to hear what you believe him to do in the right now. Faith is not someday he's going to bless me. That's not faith. That's wish. God never told you to operate in the realm of futuristic hope that is so far in the future. You know, it just becomes a, a pacifying thought that, you know, someday I guess God will, if he ever shows up, you know, and wants to, you know, after all, who am I to, for him to ever step into my life? He is a God who loves you unconditionally, and that kind of stuff, my friends, has to be eliminated because he loves you. He paid a price for you. He poured his blood out for you. He, you know, he gave you, you and I, resurrection power and every believer in the body of Christ. But he still needs to hear your faith. Now, most people don't want to say things that God, for example, well, I don't want to say I'm healed when I'm still hurting. Then you're going to remain hurting and never get healed. This is not a criticism. You see, but most people have, are trying to operate, but they're operating by broken faith. And the, yet the Bible says, Paul said to Titus, make sure you're living by unbroken faith. Are you with me now? Oh, I'll watch. I'll prove this to you. He needs to hear something. From the book of Genesis, if I had time, God spoke the world into existence. The Holy Spirit hoovered and it was made manifest. That's the summary of Galatians 3.5. Another verse that will help you as I get ready to close and pray for you is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Where Paul says, we too have the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Wrong words. Oh, that's part of it. Anyways, it's important that you and I understand this. Listen. We do have the same spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. So referring to an attitude. Do you have you know, an attitude of faith when it comes. You need to not speak the circumstance or the problem or the negativity. You need to say what God says about your situation. Well, you don't understand. It doesn't feel good. I know it doesn't feel good, but you're going to have to say what is good and what is right based on God's word. It's not about feelings. It's about truth 
I'm not denying any facts, but I'm simply saying don't let the facts dominate the gospel in your life. That's why Paul said, do not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. If you don't know what the Bible says, then you don't know what you're believing. So you have to go to the word to find out what he says about your body, what he says about your marriage, what he says about your children, what he says about your finances. And you have to be a doer of that word. But it's at the same time, faith is an action. Faith without corresponding actions is dead. Dead faith never raised anybody. You know, and the Bible talks about how you and I ought to have living faith, strong faith. I mean, we need to be fully persuaded even when the promise is so contrary to all the evidence around us, all the logic of the wisest so-called people on the planet Earth. God will come through for you because God always watches over his word to perform it on your behalf because God is good on his word. Come on, somebody, get excited for Jesus. Amen. And so it's important as the praise and worship team comes up here, it's important that you and I understand that God is a God of faith. That God is a God who says, if you're going to build a life, you need to frame it with the word of God. Boy, I got so much more. That was my introduction. And, uh, but here's what I want you to understand. Maintaining a spirit of faith. Making sure that you speak according. Listen to what Paul said. We too have the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith as the patriarchs, as, as those that have gone before us, as the great Abrahams and the great Moseses and the great Davids, you know, and, and the many other patriarchs and examples that we have, both men and women, Esthers and Ruths and uh, other individuals that operated by believing God beyond the circumstances, beyond the negativity that surrounded them in their day. He says, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. You need to believe and then speak. Did you know that's what it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10? That's how a person gets saved. Because that's how salvation comes. That's how the intervention of a miracle comes. When I believe with my heart and say with my mouth. You have to believe with your heart and say with your mouth. That's how Jesus says the mountain moves when you believe in your heart and say unto the mountain, be thou removed. You have to believe in your heart. It's so important that you and I understand that you do not have to be a casualty to anybody. You don't have to be pressured into making poor decisions because God is with you, God is in you, and God will always uphold you. He'll never fail you, but he needs you to speak his language, not you try to convince him about why you have to speak your language, contrary, you know, to what he says. If he says that peace belongs to me based on the word in John chapter 14, then that's what I receive. If he says joy belongs to me, well, bless God Almighty, then that's what I'm going to receive in Jesus' name. You know, Every day doesn't feel good for any one person on this planet, but it doesn't mean that you have to succumb to it, surrender yourself to it, give in to it, you know, or live in a rut. You know, you don't have to be a casualty. You're not a casualty. You're a Christian, and there's a difference. You know, you have the God factor on the inside of you, and you have to start thinking that way. You have to start speaking that way, and you have to start believing based on the written Word of God. So we got some truth here today based on what Jesus said, how to build your house, this house, your home, your marriage, the, the, the house of God, you know, how to change our nation as well. You know, we know how to do it based on the written word, based on having faith. He needs to hear your faith. Some of you right now maybe have never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, or maybe you're listening to me right now and you need to rededicate your life. You know what he needs right now? He just needs you to believe in your heart that he loves you because he does. He loves you unconditionally, always has. He's never stopped loving you. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. Some of us, we think because we made a mistake or got into something that all of a sudden God doesn't want to have anything to do with us. That is not true. That's a life in the pit of hell. God wants to restore you. 
God loves you. God has a place for you. And he has never given up on you. I need you to pray this prayer with me either for the first time or maybe you just need to rededicate, reconsecrate your heart to him. And I want you to say this no matter where you're at. Say this with me or after me as I speak because it's believing in your heart and saying with your mouth that causes you to be born again or causes you to be restored or causes things to get back in alignment with God. Amen? Say this. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you now and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me on the cross that I might have resurrection life. Today, I receive your unconditional love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. I receive you, Jesus, as my Savior. I am now a child of God, part of the family of God. Heaven is my home because I am, by faith, born again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow, we love you. We appreciate you. You know what you are now, as I say all the time, you are a walking miracle. That's exactly what you are. And you know, we want to just worship God. Do you have something to worship Him? We're going to sing a song right now because we just love to sing. And I want you to do one thing, if you would, for me right now. As your device is on, you might have your... Well, I know you don't use Androids, but if you might have an, an iPhone or whatever it is that you might, device you might have, or you might be watching us on YouTube or however it is. I was just kidding now. You know, just, just set it down. And I want you to worship with the team, if you would, for a moment. Just enter in with this song. Let God just drop that prayer down on the inside of you. God's going to begin to show up big time in your life. You're going to sense, many of you are going to sense His presence. You already do right now, even as I'm speaking. Because what's going to happen in the name of Jesus, you're going to receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, you're going to receive a breakthrough thought, a breakthrough idea. Some of you have been stuck in your thinking. You haven't been able to figure something out. He's going to uncork that because you've just opened up the avenues of the supernatural. You've just believed with your heart and said with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And now he is working on the inside of you. Just begin to worship him. Lift your hands up. Lift your voice up. Let's sing this song. Father, we worship you, Lord. We believe in every word that you say on us, Lord. We don't hope for it like it's far away, Father. We believe now and our faith is in you now. We believe that we will see you, Father. So wherever you're at, just lift them up. Raise your hands if you can. Shut your eyes and let's see. Let's worship our Father.
Somebody give him a great big virtual hand clap right now, each and every one of you. I want you to expect that kidney condition to leave you, the ulcer condition to leave you. Some of you have been having some problems with your heart condition. Right now, you even sense the presence of God on your life. Go and have it checked out because God is good. We rebuke sickness and disease because He is a God who's taking care of you in the right now. All you and I have to do is believe right now in the God of miracles. He heard your faith. You just sang it. You just sang your faith. You just said He is a God of your present. He's taking care of you. He's not forgotten you. Some of you are going to see that you're going to wake up tomorrow for the first time in many weeks. You're going to be without any panic attacks. You're not going to have that anxiety. You're not going to wake up in the middle of the night. You're going to say, my God, what happened? It's the anointing. It's the anointing. It's the blessing of God. He loves you. He cares for you. And he wants you to know that he showed up because you decided to praise him tonight. So get excited for all the good things. Listen, we enjoyed having you with us today. The miracles aren't stopping. So just keep on expecting because God is still moving. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you joining us. Don't forget, we're going to continue on next Wednesday in this direction because God is helping us to frame our world according to His Word and by faith in our God. Amen. Aloha from the family of Word of Life, a church you can always call home.